Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing what it means to be more like Jesus. Many Christians place a lot of stress on becoming more like Jesus, but what exactly does that mean? Curing illnesses? Multiplying loaves and fish? Walking on water? Fortunately, not all of the qualities that Jesus demonstrates in the Gospels are quite as hard to attain as those. Jesus also had many qualities that any person can work towards without any of that. And last time, we discussed the prayer life of Jesus, and to what extent it can serve as a model for our own prayer lives. Today, the love of Jesus for the faithful. Often when we meet someone, the things we notice most about them are how they treat the people around them. Jesus treated his disciples and followers in a loving way, which showed itself in a number of different ways. And behold, a leper came and adored him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, stretching forth his hand, touched him, saying, I will be thou made clean. And forthwith his leprosy was cleansed. Matthew 8, 2-3 a leper calls Jesus Lord and pleads for help, and Jesus heals him. We may not be able to heal lepers, but we also can reach out and help others when they need it. After that, he putteth water into a basin, and began to wash the feet of his disciples, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. John thirteen five. Jesus explained to Peter that washing their feet was necessary if they were to have any part in him. However, it was very uncommon for a teacher to wash the feet of their students. Usually, it would be students or servants who would do something like this. It's a task that was seen as humiliating in those times, which is why Peter initially objected. But, as we've seen in past episodes, the humility of Jesus is profound. He performs this task out of love for his disciples because he wants them to be saved and to live with him in heaven one day, even if it means doing something that would normally be done by the lowest of servants. However, remember that love isn't just about doing things for people. It's about acting for the benefit of others, and sometimes the benefit of others can be served best by challenging people to do more and better in the future. And Jesus, looking on him, loved him, and said to him, One thing is wanting unto thee. Go, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Mark 10.21 this is from the story of the young man who had obeyed the law of God his whole life, but who was too attached to his possessions. Jesus loves him, but challenges him to gain treasure in heaven by giving up his treasures on earth. Every miracle, every teaching, and every challenge or command that Jesus gave to his disciples came from a place of love in the same way. But there's another quality of the love of Jesus. It wasn't affected by who someone was. And they sent to him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art a true speaker, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou dost not regard the person of men. Matthew twenty-two sixteen. Jesus was loving and merciful to rich people like Zacchaeus and poor people like the leper near the beginning of this episode. He helped the servant of the powerful centurion who approached him with a humble plea, so he had no bias against helping strong men. And they brought to him young children, that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them that brought them, whom when Jesus saw he was much displeased, and saith to them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Mark ten thirteen to 14 However, Jesus also had no bias against weak people, in fact the weakest, he welcomed their love because love is never just a one-way street. Real love requires a loving response. Even when people weren't specifically part of his group of disciples, Jesus welcomed their help. And John, answering, said, Master, we saw a certain man casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said to him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against you is for you. Luke 9, 49-50. These are just some of the ways that we can see the love of Jesus in the way he treated the faithful, both accepting and giving love freely to those who were willing to respond lovingly. He didn't do everything for the disciples because he knew it wouldn't benefit them if he had. Every decision that Jesus made about them was driven by his love of them, 
his charity. Next time, the judgment of Jesus. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.